If David from the Ontario Science Centre plays his guitar in a basement and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? I'm David from the Ontario Science Centre, and today I want to talk about the science of sound. We'll talk about how sounds are created, some properties of sound waves, and how we can use those properties to make music. Sound, whether it's from a guitar, the traffic outside, or even my voice, is made of waves, vibrations that travel through the air and into our ears. Air doesn't just vibrate on its own. It needs a source for the vibration. Sometimes you can see what's vibrating. When I pluck a guitar string, you can see the string start to vibrate. Other times, it's not as obvious. Ah, why are you so loud? When you hear me speak, it's the vocal cords inside my throat that are vibrating back and forth. If you place your hand on your throat as you speak, you'll be able to feel these vibrations. Uh... When Beethoven went deaf, he continued to write music by feeling the vibrations of his piano. Hello, Beethoven here. No, I'm just kidding. It's me, David, from the Ontario Science Centre. Well, technically speaking, this isn't actually me. It's a video of me. So, when you hear my voice, you're not hearing my vocal cords vibrate. The vibrations you hear are coming from a metal plate and a magnet inside your headphones or speakers. Here's an experiment that lets us see the vibrations from a speaker as it produces sound. I stretched a piece of plastic wrap over this mixing bowl then I poured some salt on the surface. Next, I connected my Bluetooth speaker to a sound frequency generator on my phone. When I place sound through the speaker, it will start to vibrate, which in turn will cause the salt to start to vibrate. If you don't have a Bluetooth speaker, you can actually do this same experiment with your voice. Uh... In that last experiment, we used something called a frequency generator. So let's talk about frequency. Frequency, measured in hertz, is the number of times an object vibrates back and forth every second. A frequency, or tone generator, allows me to play an exact number of hertz. If I set the generator to, say, 440 hertz, that will cause a magnet inside of the speaker to vibrate back and forth 440 times every second. Our ears and our brains perceive different frequencies as different pitches. Low frequencies, or slow vibrations, sound like low notes. As we increase the frequency and make the vibrations faster, the notes start to sound higher. Eventually, we'll reach a point where you can't even hear the frequencies anymore. That's because most people, even in perfect conditions, can only hear frequencies between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Here's a fun experiment to try at home. Find a frequency generator online, or download one on your phone, and test your hearing range. What are the highest and lowest frequencies you can hear? Okay, there, I can't hear it anymore. 20,000. As we get older, our hearing gets worse. What was that? Try testing the hearing of someone older or younger than you and see whose hearing is better. Frequency is an important property of sound, but it's not the only one. That brings us to an important equation. The speed of a wave is equal to the frequency of vibration times its wavelength. You'll usually hear this as the equation V equals F lambda, where V is the speed or velocity of the sound wave, F is its frequency, and wavelength is represented by the Greek letter lambda. We can see this relationship in action when we play musical instruments. I can shorten a sound's wavelength by shortening the guitar string. Because the speed of sound, v, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, and I'm not changing the speed of sound, then decreasing the wavelength will increase the frequency. Our ears interpret the higher frequency as a higher pitch. If I really shorten the strings, the frequency and pitch will get much higher. A recorder works the opposite way. Instead of using my fingers to make the wavelength shorter, I can make it longer by covering up some of the holes. The more holes I cover, the lower the frequency and the lower the sound. You may also notice that the different strings on a guitar 
all make different sounds, even though they're all the same length. That's because every object or system has a natural frequency, the rate at which it naturally vibrates. Guitar strings have different thicknesses, and they can be tuned to different tensions. So, they have different natural frequencies. Lots of things, like buildings, bottles, and bridges, have a natural frequency, or a rate at which they tend to vibrate. We can hear the natural frequency of the air inside this bottle when we blow on it. Here we can see that the bottle's natural frequency is about 147 hertz. That means the air inside this bottle is vibrating back and forth 147 times every second. Just like we change the frequency of the guitar by shortening the strings, we can change the frequency here by shortening the bottle. I'm not a glass blower, so I can't actually change the length of the bottle. But I can make the air inside shorter by filling it up partway with water. Will the water make the frequency higher or lower? Pause here while you come up with a hypothesis. Oh, wow, I can make pretty good waves in here. The water made the sound's wavelength shorter. And, as we can hear again, shorter wavelengths produce higher frequencies. When we play two frequencies at the same time, the waves combine to form a new, more complex sound wave. On a guitar, you can play different frequencies at once by plucking multiple strings. When you play or listen to music, you'll notice that some notes sound good together. Well, others sound a bit off. Why is that? It all has to do with frequency. As we saw before, different vibrational frequencies have different wavelengths. Certain wavelengths line up nicely, while others are out of sync. In this example, you can see that these spots, called nodes, line up perfectly with each other. And in this one, they don't. That's because the second wavelength is exactly half of the first. And because V equals F lambda, it turns out that the second wave's frequency is exactly double the first wave's. This is called harmony, when frequencies combine to produce a pleasing sound. This specific harmony is called an octave, where one note's frequency is double the other. You may have heard this term before in music class. Now that you know more about the science of sound, you can run your own experiments at home. Try making musical instruments with things around the house. You'll need something that vibrates and some way to change the frequency of those vibrations. You could try plucking things, blowing on them, or even hitting them. These are just examples with stuff I had at my apartment. I have no idea what stuff you have flying around at your place. So, uh, be creative. Music and science are meant to be fun. You can look up the frequencies of different musical notes online, and then use a frequency tuner to tune your instrument by changing either the length or the tension or the shape. Here I've tuned these bottles to three different musical notes, just enough to play you a song. <laughs> concert for your family and friends. They'll love it. Today we saw that vibrating objects create sound, and that the frequency of these vibrations determine the sound's pitch. We investigated the relationship between frequency and wavelength. Low frequencies have long wavelengths, and high frequencies have short wavelengths. Finally, we changed those wavelengths to make different frequencies, and heard that some of those notes sound good together, while others don't. Now it's time to try some sound experiments for yourself. Take a look at our companion document for some tips on what you can do next. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll play myself out.